Now we're going to talk about the US's largest life insurer, and that is called MetLife. So that's like the consolidated name, but it's a metropolitan life. Remember, you might be familiar with the MetLife building, which is on top of Grand Central Station in Midtown Manhattan, although their head office is, in fact, up in the Avenue of Americas in the Midtown area. That's not necessarily important detail, but they are, of course, one of the largest players globally and in the United States in terms of employee benefits as well as life policies. Those are the core. So market capitalization here, 51.53 billion US dollars. Price to earnings ratio, a pretty normal looking 12.28. Dividends, solid at 3.43%. Wayne, what stands out here Look, for you? What stands out for me here is that they're unbundling part of the US life business or they're selling part of the US life they're business. They're trying to get themselves deregistered yeah. as a systemically important thing. They sold their bank and a few other bits and pieces. And they have had to make such massive negative adjustments to all of their policy, all of their what assumptions. Does that mean? In other words, recapitalizing themselves they, to a greater extent. They're trying to maybe sort out under provisioning in the past, yes. it sounds like. Yes. So just very quickly, what this means is I insure your life. Mm -hmm. I hold assets against that. I must now work out what my liability to you is. What is the is. likelihood of me dying? When you're dying, what's going yes. to happen? And this is the same on motor car insurance, household insurance, yeah, yeah. everything, retirement annuities. Now, when a life company reassesses future liabilities, they do mm -hmm. this every six months, every year, whenever, and they make a massive quantum change in their obligations, it normally tells you something's not all that good. And wh why they would have under provision in the past is because they were being a bit greedy. They wanted to a declare bit, yeah. larger uh, yeah. declarations to shareholders. Bigger, along bigger the way. profits. So yeah. now all of a sudden they come up with these multi billion rand additional yes. liability yes. charges for these businesses that they're not going to try and get rid of. But how does that look at the share price then? Because if you do that, then obviously your shareholders well, you, are going to get a bit of a negative surprise. Well, you can surprise. see the price has come down. It's, it's, yeah. it's, sort of, it's sort of stabilizing where it is now. What I like to do is the all-time high of this one in 2007, admittedly again before the crisis, was about $71. Yeah. It hit $12 a share in March 2009, but since then you can see it's rebounded. So it's generally perceived uh, perhaps that yeah. maybe it's gotten to a better position and things are yeah. looking better. But look, whenever I've, I've learned from experience in the past, whenever companies start making these massive adjustments to mm -hmm. their actuarial mm -hmm. assumptions, their liability mm -hmm. assumptions, it just causes concern. They've also had huge derivative losses. Mm -hmm. I mean, some, some small profits, but also multi-billion dollar derivative losses yep. that they're now recognizing in the income statement. It just raises caution but this flags. is a similar story that you'd hear with all of the U.S. banks and financials, all of the insurers and so on, is that they all had that sort of cathartic experience in 2008, 2009. Yes. The economy has been fairly strong, but the investors haven't really warmed up to they them. They haven't jumped back They're on in. a relatively modest mm. price to earnings ratio. There's a bigger regulatory overburden. Their regulatory costs have risen. They're reprovisioning. Surely, aren't we reaching the point now where that's largely behind them and they're it, now it, off it a value? It probably is, but when you look, I mean, we spoke about AIG. AIG, although it's not as nearly as concentrated yeah. as MetLife in the particular areas, but they haven't had to show this, and it's certainly got no other no other companies had such big headlines yeah. about this extra provisioning and I know so investment you're saying MetLife is, seems to you like a special bigger, case. bigger, bigger yeah. than normal quite frankly yeah. so you're not inclined to go no hot I'll go not hot yeah okay I'm gonna pass on that one too I'm not always been a big fan of the insurance industry and this one of course has got its own history